this next segment might be a little long because uh, this is an article posted in Consortium News that that uh, I remember seeing a while back, and uh, it's a Chris Hedges article. Uh, I like Chris Hedges, but you know, Hedges is not for. He's not fun. Not that I'm saying I'm fun. I'm I'm particularly depressing. <laughs> But Hedges is not somebody you go for to be like, I want to I want to read about American Empire, but still have some goofs along the way. <laughs> like he's pretty, uh, you know, to the point and and doesn't hold anything back. Um, so and I kind of like that about him. You know, he's like it's no nonsense. He's 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 very objective about what he says. Uh, and this is again, this is from this is from August 2020. And let's uh, let me pull up the article here, uh, and and I'll 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 read this and and we'll 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 have some comments and like I said, you know, you guys can leave your comments as we go along too. Uh, so the article starts by saying the terminal decline of the United States will not be solved by elections. The political rot and depravity will continue to eat away at the soul of the nation, spawning uh, what anthropologists call crisis cults. Movements left, led by demagogues that prey on unbearable psychological and financial distress. I talked about this last week, right? That's part of the reason of why Trump was able to galvanize the people that he was galvanizing. Uh, because these people are desperate. They feel like they have nowhere to turn. And here comes this, this demagogue, this strong man, um, who, who preys on that desperation, who pays on, pr preys on that financial distress, and says, I will save you. And... and henceforth these crisis cults are born right like you're in crisis i can come save you and boom here we are right and he goes on to say these crisis cults are already well established amongst followers followers of the christian right and donald trump just like i said uh peddle magical thinking and infantilism that promises in exchange for all autonomy prosperity and a return to a mythical past order and security and that past that they're talking about i i, I was thinking about this i was like great again what the fuck did they mean great again right um is, is like that separate vibe shit to go back to the past of that, to go back to an era where, where, where it was just white people are dominant and they live out in the suburbs and they don't have to deal with minorities, right? Every so often there might be a black person that shows up to deliver their milk or, or a brown person that cuts their yard. And that's what they like. They like that separation. It's just separate but equal. I have my little area and you have yours. Don't come into my area unless we tell you to, but we'll come into your area whenever the well, hell we damn please, right? And, and that's, that's kind of the, the way that it's, it's set up. The dark yearnings amongst white working class for vengeful and moral renewal through violence and unchecked greed and corruption of the corporate oligarchs and billionaires who manage our failed democracy, which has already instituted wholesale government surveillance and revoked most civil liberties, are part of the twisted pathologies that infect all civilizations sputtering towards oblivion. I witnessed the deaths of all other nations during the collapse of the communist regimes in Eastern Europe and later the former Yugoslavia. I have smelled this stench before. Basically saying this is where we're headed, right? Um, uh, I, I believe somebody asked what the, what, what they believe the future of America is uh, right here is uh, Hedges is talking about it. It's, it's going to become, um, it's going to become another Yugoslavia. It's going to become another failed state. And we're already heading there, right? We've already seen this major economic collapse. Uh, we're, we're in like the worst depression we've ever seen. There is um, hundreds and thousands of people that are jobless, that are going to become homeless, and that is going to perpetuate the, the pandemic even further. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Uh, and, uh, and, and eventually it, it'll spread beyond even a, a point of vaccination. So even though we have vaccination now, the point should be that we should be preventing people from becoming homeless, preventing people from becoming jobless. And the easy way to do that is by giving people a UBI and canceling debts and canceling rent so that people can actually stay afloat when they can't go to work because if they go to work, they might catch the virus and spread it around even further, right? So this public health crisis can very quickly be taken care of by an economic buffer directly given to the people. Um, I wanna read a little bit more of this, right? The removal of Trump from office will only exasperate the lust for racist violence he incites and the intoxication, in, intoxicating elixir of white nationalism. The ruling elites who who first built 
a mafia economy, then built a mafia state, will continue under Biden, as they did under Trump, Barack Obama, George W. Bush, Bill Clinton, and Ronald Reagan, to the wantonly pillage and loot. The militarized police will not stop their lethal rampages in poor neighborhoods. Endless wars will not end. The bloated military budget will not be reduced. The world's largest prison population will remain a stain upon the country. Manufacturing jobs are shipped overseas and will not return. And this social inequality will grow. The for-profit healthcare system will gouge the public uh, and price millions out of healthcare, uh, millions out of the healthcare system. The language of hate and bigotry will be normalized as a primary form of communication. Internal enemies, including Muslims, immigrants, dissidents, will be defamed and attacked. The hyper-masculinity that uh, compensates for the feelings of impotence will intensify. It will direct its venom towards women and all who fail to conform to the rigid male stereotypes, especially artists, LGBTQ people, and intellectuals. Lies, conspiracy theories, trivia, and fake news, what Hannah Arendt called the nihilistic relativism, will dominate the airwaves and social media as mocking verifiable fact and truth. Ecocide, the, the uh, presages, the extinction of human species and most other life forms will barrel unabated towards the apocalyptic conclusion. We run heedlessly into the abyss after putting something in front of us to stop us seeing it, Pascal wrote. And we see all this stuff happening, right? We've we've seen uh, we we've seen the fact that violence is being exacerbated. We just had this show tr impeachment yesterday, which passed through the House. And I I said this last week, that is going to infuriate them and cause more violence. And what happened? The second they started talking about impeachment, there's a bunch of these people saying they're going to go and 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 stage these coups in various capitals across the country. If you would have let them go home, tuck their tails between their legs, say they're shameful, blah, 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 and then left well enough alone, they probably wouldn't have gotten as infuriated to double down on what they believe in. And you can't shame these people out of their beliefs, right? You can't, I, w I would wager to say you can't shame anybody out of their beliefs. <laughs> it's very difficult to say, bah, boo, you're bad. And then you shame them out of it. The, and then they go, oh man, I am bad. It's very difficult. They, they, it's something critical needs to happen, right? Uh, you, you need something like major to make that shift. And all of the stuff that Hedges just pointed out, the militarized police will 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 not stop their lethal rampage through poor neighborhoods. I mean, I'm, where did you see the cops stopping any of those people from going? Into, I mean, they fucking let them in. You know, for-profit healthcare system will gouge uh, the, the public and price millions out of healthcare system. We're already seeing that. We're seeing people having their health care tied to their employment, no longer being employed and now losing their health care. And they can't afford to just get health care on their own because it's too fucking expensive. We're already seeing that. And the political will in this country is is not to make social programs easier uh, to to. It's, it's not to make things easier to help people. It's to make things a lot more difficult. So I still hear people that are on unemployment. I have a friend that lost his job because the company that he worked for wasn't going to do anything about people wearing masks and he felt unsafe and he made that statement and he was like, oh, well, it's not for us to, to um, you know, dictate who gets to come into our store and so on and so forth. And he was like, well, whose job is it? Like the governor's not doing it, you know, and he lost his job. And he's still he's still waiting on unemployment stuff. It's not that it can't be done. It's just they it's that they don't want to get it done. There's the lack of political will. Same thing, lies, conspiracy theories, trivia, and fake news will dominate the airwaves, right? I mean, and, and they have a lot of conspiracy, like the QAnon has become a big movement and people are obsessed with that shit. Russiagate, that was a big conspiracy theory that people believed in. That has been debunked time and time again. And yet people, the corporate media is unwilling to let that shit go. They're unwilling to see, <laughs> see it for what it is. This is a, a, a really cool... Uh, image, by the way, I really like this image. Uh, it's by Mr. Fish. Uh, that's the artist, Mr. Fish. Uh, the worse it gets, and it will get worse as a pandemic hits us after a deadly wave with an estimated 300,000 Americans dead by December and possibly 400,000 by January. The more desperate nation, the more the de uh, 
desperate the nation will become. Tens of millions of people will be thrown into destitution, evicted from their homes, and abandoned. Social collapse, as Peter Drucker observed in Weimar Germany in the 1930s, brings with it a loss of faith in ruling institutions and ruling ideologies. And we've seen this time and time again, right? How many people can't trust the government? You can't trust the government. They won't do anything for you, right? Uh, this is this is the argument against socialism is, oh, you can't have a government-run healthcare program. You can't have a government-run whatever. If you make it public, then the government's just going to fuck it up. And... To some respects, they're true, but again, that goes back to the argument of political will. They don't have the political will to make that shit work because they want that stuff to fail. If They want Medicare for All to fail. They want free public colleges to fail. So what they'll do is they'll say, well, we'll compromise and pit it against this corporate thing. By the way, we're funded by this corporate thing. So again, it, it makes it very necessary for this shit to fail. They organize it to fail. They manufacture its own failure. And you get people that are that are like, fuck it, I don't believe in this government, which leads to, you know, thoughts of dissent and anarchy, not in the way that we're thinking, not in the way that people are going on the streets and protesting. Yes, that does happen. But it to, in, into the right, it goes into coups and following a, a, a false strongman. Like Donald Trump. And what le what what has caused that, again, as as Chris Edges is pointing out here, is a, a long history of neoliberalism. Is this long history of abandoning the working class? Is this long history of of feigning equality, right? Like saying, oh, black and brown people are, are, are important and LGBTQ people are important and they're equal and blah, 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 but not saying, yes, but so are white people. And we're going to take you along, you know, in this, in this journey to progress, in this journey to betterment of life. They're not saying that. They're just like, look, these marginalized communities, that's who we all care about. And they do... Eh, they don't really care about them. They care about them to get votes. But that's why they can't go to the Demo That's why these conservatives can't go to the Democratic Party is because the Democratic Party doesn't give a shit about them. It's never given a shit about them. And then the Republicans feign that they give a shit about them. But they're like, hey, by the way, you're on your own. Don't come to us for help. Just give us your votes, but don't come to us for help. And then they go, if you do come to help, you're weak. That hypermasculinity that Hedge just talked about, right? They, they call you weak. Um, I'm going to go a little further down here. Uh... It, to this paragraph, to, to Drucker saw that Nazism succeeded not because people believed in its fantastic promises, but in spite of them. Nazi absurdities, he pointed out, had been witnessed by a hostile press, a hostile radio, a hostile cinema, a hostile church, and a hostile government, which uh, untiringly pointed out the, the Nazis' lies, the Nazis' inconsistencies, the unattainability of their promises, and the dangers and folly of their course. Nobody, he noted, would have been a Nazi if rational belief in Nazi promises had been the prerequisite. The poet, play, playwright, and socialist revolutionary Ernst Toller, who was forced into exile and stripped of his citizenship when the Nazis took power in 1933, wrote much of the same in his autobiography. The people are tired of reason, tired of thought and reflection. They ask, what has reason done for them in the last few years? What good has insights and knowledge done for us? After Toller committed suicide in 1939, W.H. Auden, in his poem, In Memories of Ernst, Ernst Toller, wrote, We are lived by powers we pretend to understand. They arrange our loves. It is they who direct at the end, the enemy bullet, the sickness, or even our hand. It, it goes to that point where it's like you can't, it's difficult to use reason for the, with them. Because they've been, how do I put that? Hypnotized by the glitz and glamour of what what these promises are. Because all of these promises that that these you know neo fascists give them are exactly what they want to hear. It doesn't matter whether he's going to give it to them or not. I mean, he he di didn't do shit for them. He's enriched himself and his billionaire friends far more than he has helped anybody get out of poverty and debt in middle America. I mean, the working class is still getting fucked over left and right. But they were getting fucked over left and right under Obama. It's difficult because this person keeps talking to them. And the the conditions that they've lived in have forced them into such dire destitution 
that they don't give a shit about seeing reason. I don't know if a lot of us have been there um, to that point where, where you feel that abandoned by something uh, that no matter what you do, you just don't see the reason behind these things. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know if I've been there either. Um, there's there's quite a bit of this article to go. Uh, and I, I don't want to read the whole thing because it's 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 very good. Um, but I want to I want to get to the towards the end of this. Right. Um, because at the end, the end of this is 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 also important. So he says, Joe Biden, a shallow political hack devoid of fixed beliefs or intellectual depth, depth is an expression of the nostalgia of the ruling class that yearns to return to the pantomime of democracy. They want us to restore the decorum and civic religion that makes the presidency a form of monarchy that sacralizes the organs of the state of power. Again, something that I've been saying for a long time. Uh, we have we we put all our all our eggs into one basket, and that's the basket of the presidency. Uh, we don't really care about local. We don't we don't focus on on city elections. We don't make a big deal out of them. Um, and this, like like he says, it's it's the expression of the nostalgia of the ruling class. They want to go back to a point where the ruling class, if you are someone that comes from a a great deal of wealth that has championed billionaires that has championed individualistic um, wealthiness right y you get rich by stumping on your neighbors Th that is kind of what joe biden really represents he doesn't represent healing and, and unity nothing he's ever done has represented healing and unity it has represented exactly this this thing that if you're rich and you're in politics and you're a pundit and you use big fancy words, you're a good guy. We can listen to this. I don't understand what he's saying, but boy, howdy, does he sound nice saying it. Now, the next paragraph, Donald Trump's vulgarity and ineptitude is an embarrassment to the architects of the empire. He has ripped back the veil that covered our failed democracy, but no matter how hard the elites try, uh, this veil cannot be restored. The mask is off. The facade is gone. Biden cannot bring it back. Again, something that I... <laughs> I don't want to keep tooting my own horn, uh, but I, I, I've said this stuff before. So it's really nice to see someone like Chris Hedges kind of validate these points, right? Um, Trump's not going away. I, I genuinely think, especially now that he's off Twitter, uh, I think... He, this this is going to solidify some kind of return to media for him, uh, whether it's Trump TV or a recurring segment on MSNBC, Fox News, and CNN, because they'll give it to him. I mean, how much money did they made just covering the fucking Capitol riots? And, and they won't admit the fact that they are partly responsible, um, in a large way, partly responsible for Trump. So... He is. He has unveiled the mask of how crude this system really is. Like it pretends to be this academic, intellectual. Yes, uh, of course, I have a, a corn cob pipe and I talk about healthcare quite often, and, and that is part of my day. And you wouldn't understand it because you do not have a corn cob pipe, nor do you understand the intricacies of healthcare like that. And then people go, "Oh, we can trust that guy." That veil is off, and it's just it's just Donald Trump. Donald Trump, the problem with Donald Trump, why, why the oligarchy doesn't like him, is he is the pure representation of capitalism. He's old, fat, sagging, and refuses to go away. And he will refuse to go away. And his supporters are not going away. Those people that are galvanized are galvanized. Because for the last four years, there was a bunch of people that were like, hey, stop saying all Trump supporters are racist because they're probably not. Some of them might have just been desperate people. And a lot of people who are that desperate get brainwashed and propagandized to believe that br black and brown people are there to take their livelihoods away from them and, and ruin the rest of their life. That's just, so what, what can we do to show these people that, you know, black and brown people and LGBTQ members of LGBTQ and women are not a threat. They don't need to feel threatened by them. And there was virtually nothing done um, on a, on a large scale level to, to 
quell these people's fears, right? Uh, even the media, even Joe Biden, whenever you looked at the Black Lives Matter protests to defund the police protests, he always referred to them as riots. Even Joe Biden was referring to them as riots. So people that are, the, the liberal class also thinks of them as riots. The conservative class thinks of them as riots. And there's people who really know what it is. They're protests that the cops get into. And they, they lob fucking tear gas and rubber bullets at them. And, how, uh, and, and this bullshit of how long are they gonna, supposed to take this abuse? But they get fooled into thinking that. Because that's what the propaganda machine is doing. So the political and economic social dysfunction define the American empire, our staggering inability to contain the pandemic, which now infects over 5 million Americans, and the failure to cope with the economic fallout the pandemic has caused has exposed the American capitalist model as bankrupt. Yeah, it's free, it, it has freed the world, dominated by the United States for seven decades, to look at other social and political systems that serve the common good rather than corporate greed. The diminished stature of the United States, even among our European allies, brings with it hope for new forms of government and new forms of power. It is up to us to abolish the American kleptocracy. It is up to us to mount sustained acts of mass civil disobedience to bring down the empire. It poisons the world as it poisons us. If we mobilize to build it an open society, uh, we hold out the possibility of beating back the crisis cults as well as slowing down dis the, the disrupting march towards ecocide. This requires us to acknowledge that protesting in the streets of Beirut that are uh, uh, like, pro like protesting in the streets of Beirut, that our kleptocracy, like Lebanon's, is incapable of being salvaged. The American system is of inverted totalitarianism, as political philosopher Sheldon Wool called it, must be eradicated if we are to wrest back our democracy and save ourselves from mass extinction. And I agree with, with Hedges in that regard, right? It has to be direct action. I don't I don't see any other way that we can pull ourselves out of the system, right? It it capitalism, I there's there's a lot of beliefs of like, you know, compassionate capitalism that 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 is thrown around. I don't believe that's actually even possible because that's the nature of capitalism in and of itself is greed, is individualistic um machismo that you are the best and you deserve everything all the time and fuck everybody else like that kind of thinking will eventually lead to mass extinction it's all about consume 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 do better do better do better everything has to be up 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 it has to be an exponential climb or we're all failures and if we're all failures then no one's going to give a shit about us and why are we even alive it's bullshit like that right but really what we should be looking at is a steady economy, not one that ebbs and flows, not one that has booms and busts. How can we create a steady economy? And that's not through constant consumption. It's looking at sustainability. It's, it's looking at compassion as a, as a focal point of leadership. And there's nobody in leadership right now that has that level of compassion. And I think we get obsessed, right? Everybody gets obsessed and they fall into following that one person, that one person that they believe is going to save everybody. And the reality is there is no one person that's going to save everybody. It's going to have to take all of us to really start changing the way that we live our lives and the way that we interact with each other to, to make that kind of a change. That's the reality. It's not easy. But it becomes even harder when there's only a small group of people doing it. And then the large group of people go, boy, that's really nice, but, you know, I'm not going to do that shit. Or, boy, that's really nice, but fuck you for even saying something like that. You know, I hear that shit a bunch when I bring this sort of stuff up. I know, this was a bit, bit of a... <laughs> I told you, Hedges is not... It's You know, it's, he's not the easiest thing to to read there. But um, I, I think it's it's important... Uh, because it, we need to we need to see that sort of stuff, you know. We do need a paradigm shift, and that's part of what he's talking about is is making a paradigm shift. Um, 
a little bit of a heavy, heavy middle topic to talk about. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H -H -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.